The Anteater by Roald Dahl, 1983. Some wealthy folks from the USA who lived near San Francisco Bay possessed an only child called Roy, a plump and unattractive boy, half-baked, half-witted, and half-boiled, but worst of all, most dreadfully spoiled. Whatever Roy desired each day, his father bought him right away. Toy motor cars, electric trains, the latest model aeroplanes, a color television set, a saxophone, a clarinet, expensive teddy bears that talked, and animals that walked and squawked. That house contained sufficient toys to thrill a half a million boys. As well as this, young Roy would choose two pairs a week of brand new shoes. And now he stood there shouting, What on earth is there I haven't got? How hard to think of something new. The choices are extremely few. Then added as he scratched his ear, Hold it! I've got a good idea. I think the next thing I must get should be a most peculiar pet. The kind that no one else has got. A giant anteater. Why not? As soon as father heard the news, he quickly wrote to all the zoo zoos. Dear sirs, he said, my dear keepers, do any of you have anteaters? They answered by return of mail. Our anteaters are not for sale. Undaunted, Ray's fond parents hurled more messages across the world. He said, I'll pay you through the nose if you can get me one of those. At last, he found an Indian gent. He lived near Delhi in a tent who said that he would sacrifice his pet for an enormous price. The price demanded, if you please, was 50,000 gold rupees. The anteater arrived half dead. It looked at Roy and softly said, I'm famished. Do you think you could please give me just a little food? A crust of bread, a bit of meat. I haven't had anything to eat. And all the time I was at sea, for nobody looked after me. Roy shouted, no, no bread or meat. Go find some ants. They're what you eat. The starving creature crawled away. It searched the garden night and day. It hunted every inch of ground, but not one single ant it found. Please give me food, the creature cried. Go find an ant, the boy replied. By chance, upon that very day, Roy's father's sister came to stay a foul old hag of 83, whose name, it seems, was Dorothy. She said to Roy, come, let us sit out in the sun and talk a bit. Roy said, I don't believe you've met my new and most unusual pet. He pointed down among the stones where something lay all skin and bones. Ant eater, he yelled. Don't lie there yawning. This is my aunt. Come say good morning. Some people in the USA have trouble with the words they say. 
However hard they try, they can't. Pronounce simple words like aunt. Instead of aunt, they call it ant. Instead of can't, they call it can't. Roy yelled, come here, you so-and-so. My aunt would like to say hello. Slowly, the creature raised its head. Do you mean that that's an ant? It said. Of course, cried Roy. Aunt Dorothy. This ant is over 83. The creature smiled. Its tummy rumbled. It licked its starving lips and mumbled, A giant ant. By gosh, a winner. At last I'll get a decent dinner. No matter if it's 83, if that's an ant, then it's for me. Then, taking very careful aim, it pounced upon the startled dame. It grabbed her firmly by the hair and ate her up right then and there, murmuring, as it chewed the feet, the largest ant I'll ever eat. Meanwhile, our hero Roy had sped in terror to the potting shed and tried to make himself obscure behind a pile of horse manure. But Ant Eater came sneaking in already. It was much less thin, and said to Roy, You little squirt, I think I'll have you for dessert.